for the invocation of her name. Lisa? Steve Jobs, uh, as you probably have all seen and heard in the media, I uh, took a um, newspaper clipping, and he has a bunch of quotes, and I just want to share one of his quotes from the newspaper clipping, because I think it's kind of appropriate. Um, one of his, his philosophy was to think different, and I think in Toastmasters, we have to kind of embrace that and think different we're um, composing and giving our speeches. So one of his quotes um, from 1998 actually was simple can be harder than complex. You have to work hard to get your thinking clean to make it simple. But it's worth it in the end because once you get there, you can move mountains. So I kind of related that to our speeches when we were composing them and not try to make them really complex, but just to get the message across and can be really impactful. So it's simple. Yeah. Thank you. We're just supposed to be in by October 1st. So if anybody needs to do that yet, please do so to Maggie or any one of the officers. And our meeting today, we'll have one speaker and then uh, probably quite a few table topics. And Alan is our table topics person today. And at this time, I'd like to call on our person for word of the day, Darren. Please join me in welcoming Darren. The word of today is inimitable. Inimitable. It means incapable of being imitated or copied. Chris's speaking style is inimitable. your major. Now no one knows for sure where this survey came from. Some claim it was the student newspaper. Others claim it was Cosmo magazine. Some even say it was Playboy. Uh. <laughs> nice personality. No matter who the source, the results were devastating. You see, the whole reason that someone goes to college is to get a major in something. 
So by not being able to ask a girl her major makes it impossible for a guy to start a conversation with a girl. And so we had to invent our own ways to attract the attention of girls without actually having a conversation. Some of us learned to play guitar. Others learned to play sports. <laughs> Some even resorted to magic. <laughs> In other words, we just didn't know what would work. Ah, uh, but as for me, I had my own invention, and I call it word flipping. The way it worked was like this. I would walk up to two girls and ask them the names, say for example, Tina and Kelly. I would then take their names and flip them around and call them Tina and Telly. But it didn't just work for names, it also worked for places. San Diego became Dan Diego. Mini skirt became Skinny Mert. As you can see, the possibilities were endless. So, did it work? No. <laughs> well, at least not for me. It worked great for my roommate. You see, as I went through my routine of flipping names, flipping places, flipping nouns and adjectives, at some point, at least one of the girls that I was talking to would start to roll her eyes. And it was at this point that my roommate would step in, whisper something in her ear, and start an actual conversation with a girl. And so I knew something had to be done. Well, lucky for me, at this point in the history of the world, reality television was taking off. And so on our campus, they had auditions for a reality television show. The show was called Roommates, and the premise was this. A bunch of guys and girls live in an apartment together with a spare bedroom. Each week, a reality star from some other reality show stays in that bedroom and pays the rent for all of the roommates except for one who is then eliminated. That was the premise of the show. And so for the auditions, me and my roommates head over there <coughs> because in college you don't do anything without your roommate. We end up at the auditions. They put us in a room, a bunch of guys and girls together to see who has reality television worthy personality style. And it just so happened that across from me was two girls, Tanya and Katie. And so I asked them, what's your names? And as I prepared my wind up, my roommate jumped in and said, Kanya and Tate. Oh, no. And so it is that my roommate became a contestant on the reality television show, Roommates. Roommates, episode one. My roommate and all of his roommates from the television show go out to the bars. He walks up to the girls, flips their names around, and they laugh as if it's the funniest thing they've ever heard in their life. <laughs> that is not how it happens in real life. <laughs> the episode continues. He brings them back to the apartment, takes them to his room, and says, welcome to my red room. They giggle. We watch them walk into the room. We see the door slam shut in our face and cut to commercial. That is not how it happens in real life. <laughs> that was episode one. There was no episode two because according to CBS, nobody watched the show. Nobody watched the show. And so, soon enough, my roommate returned to real life. Ah, but I was prepared for the confrontation. <laughs> Unfortunately, he came prepared also and threw the first strike. Hey man, no hard feelings, right? You've stolen my thing. For that, we must pay. <laughs> Come on, man, no one watched the show anyway. How about I buy you a beer? You're gonna have to do better than that. <laughs> and pizza. <laughs> Really? <laughs> I get to choose the toppings. <laughs> Fine. And so it was. My roommate and I go out to the bars. The roommate that no one had seen on television. When we went to the bars, everyone had seen him on television. <laughs> <laughs> Walking up to him, introducing him themselves, asking him what it was like to be famous. Girls walking up, introducing themselves with their names already flipped around. <laughs> and so there I stood, in a rage, 
That should be me, the famous reality star. That should be me with the girls walking up with their names already flipped around, and it wasn't. And so here was my chance to set the record straight. Ah, but just as I was about to jump in and cause a scene, I see it. Out of the corner of my eye, a girl was rolling her eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I approach. I ask her the question that I ask every girl. So what's your name? She looks at me as if about to cry and says, Shelly Smiths. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I did the only thing that I could think to do under the circumstances, I sipped my beer. <laughs> and as I sipped my beer, I realized that this was my last sip as a boy and my first sip as a man. This stupid game of flipping words and flipping names is just a kid's game. It was time to be a man. Not because I wanted to be a man, not because I was ready to be a man, but because under the circumstances, I had no other choice. And so I was going to do, no matter how lame, no matter how awkward it was, I was going to have an actual conversation with a girl. And so I put down my beer, I look her in the eyes, and I ask the only question that came to mind. So what's your major? And away she went. <laughs> It was the first of what proved to be many awkward, but real, conversations. Madam Toastmaster. You know, I was thinking as you were telling the story, forgiveness. I mean, you forgave your roommate, you probably won't forget, but, you know, that's really something. Oh, I'd be a little ticked off, too. God. But that's man of you, you know, you you didn't look back, you looked forward. And, yeah. Anybody know what happened to Susan Boyle? No, I. No. Oh, I, no, I mean, nothing happened. I know, I know. I just, you know, 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 I just, I think he said, he's really into music, he said, oh, I think she's making CDs and all this stuff, but I know she had to take a hiatus because it was kind of overwhelming, oh, yeah. all the stardom, and yeah, but um, but you never know when you get your chance of fame. And she was on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, okay. She was? Oh, when Monday. she sang the, oh, Monday. Oh, okay. Isn't it last week? I mean last night, Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, was she on Monday? I didn't see it. I didn't either, I just saw Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Okay. That's why I thought you, were, you saw it and then something happened. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll give you 30 more seconds to wrap up your vows. Toastmaster book as I was walking up here. Um, on the front cover, it's the elevator speech. And I had a friend who just had an interview. Um, she didn't get the in she didn't get the job because her elevator speech wasn't prepared. And there were a couple other factors, but um, we've all heard of this. We probably all have one. Um, make sure when you go into the interview that it's you know <coughs> you've got it down and 
you know, they say the first, what, 10, 20 seconds, people already make an impression of you. Um, so just be the best you can be. Everybody's out looking for a job. And, yeah, but this is, I love this magazine. I read it every month. And it has such good information in it. portion of our meeting uh, requires you to think on your feet. So I'll be giving some of you a topic to speak on from one to two minutes. Our timer will be watching diligently. <laughs> and I think we'll start with our meeting today. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> I'm busy. I can't <laughs> You always strike me as such a, a wise person with a lot to share. I wonder if I were going to put together a, a one-minute public service announcement for kids, if, if you would be able to share any advice with them. What could you tell oh the, the young generation of today? Thank you. Well, I did have a five-year stint teaching seventh through tenth graders. And in fact, they at seventh grade, they insisted I continue on with them through the grade levels because they didn't want anyone else to teach them. So maybe I am inspirational to children. I don't know if I have anything different to say except what a parent might say. Respect your elders, listen when someone's talking to you. Take those headphones off. <laughs> I'm always telling my son to take his ear bud out for his iPad. And then many times he says, I don't even have it in, so it's not. <laughs> just keep saying it. I think just the same advice that we received when we were kids from our elders, I think it follows through in history, raising kids and getting them to the next level. And hopefully they all become very independent. Give them the old speech, you can't live with me the rest of your life, and make more money than me so I can retire early. <laughs> great. I think that will have a great impact uh, on the kids wants on this re recording that and we're going to edit it this afternoon oh, to the end, so. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be viral <laughs> actually wants on often is, is quietly sitting in the back maybe running the camera how about if you come up and So as Elisa mentioned earlier, the inimitable Steve Jobs passed away last week, and I think it affected a lot of people. I, I think he's been on the minds of, of people over the past week, and I, I know that you also uh, enjoy Apple products. How did this impact you? There's no Apple anymore. <laughs> Somebody say it, dude. There was no Steve Jobs before Steve Jobs, and there'll be no Steve Jobs 
at Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. I was reading an article yes, last night on the Wall Street Journal. They tried to compare or, or predict who will be next Steve Jobs in, in the technology, uh, technology industry. They talk about Facebook founder, talking about mm -hmm. uh, Amazon CEO. But I think it's Steve Jobs, really. It's, it's, to me, it's inspiration. And especially after he, after he get fired, almost failed the first time he created own company, he was successful, but then he felt he learned a lesson and he came back. That's, that's the most valuable mm -hmm. lesson to me. Everybody, everybody can you know, learn, can better. last week, you, you talked about uh, sometimes giving feedback to your group and, and what it takes to be a 14 leader. I wonder if you could give some feedback to Chris on his speech today and do it in one to two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed Chris's speech today because he mixed elements of humor, motion, <laughs> variation of speech, playing two characters I thought was very effective. When the speech started, I didn't really know where it was going to go, but very quickly, he was able to walk us down the path, and I found myself back in college. And I was that person wanting so desperately to have a girl talk to me, <laughs> but only to find rejection. And so, for me, the speech was entertaining. It was memorable. But the other side of that, it was painful because it brought me back <laughs> where I was four years ago. And I just want to say thank you for bringing back those horrible feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I didn't know if you had a role today, but I would like you to participate. Okay. <laughs> wow. Well, I see you have a duty. <laughs> it's okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> that's, that's great. That's the right spirit. You know, often in, in table topics, people come up with, with very uh, interesting stories, very imaginative, uh, made up stories. I wonder if I could give the extra challenge to you today to try to answer maybe a little bit more based on truth. I, saw, I, I don't think I saw you at the meeting last week. Where were you? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't actually remember that <laughs> because what has happened recently is I am on one project, which is Inject, which is our deployable anchor for the spinal cord stimulation system. And so the project is supposed to be done, and I'm supposed to be transitioning off and just really doing some very basic level tasks at this point. Um, that is not happening because we've decided that the F since the FDA could potentially ask a certain uh, pool of questions, we need to essentially do a whole other set of testing to make sure that we get our, our data completed and make sure we're ready for these questions because it's actually tied to the Rice Creek Clean Room submission. So if we don't pass our section, Rice Creek doesn't get uh, approved either and Intellis doesn't launch on time. So that's a lot of weight on a couple of people's shoulders in a particular team. So well, I'm transitioning off with these very minor responsibilities of making sure the entire business unit doesn't crash because we don't get a submission approved. Uh, in addition, I'm on two other projects that have recently come up, and one that's a small project, it's a very small change, nothing nothing big, it's really just a couple of change requests that ultimately requires a much deeper level of understanding and evaluation. And I've also been told there's another team that is in desperate need of additional design resources, which is our interest in trial and lead. Um, 
So I'm kind of trying to ramp up the speed there. I actually now, in the process of rambling through this, remember I was in a one-on-one -on -one with my supervisor about the fact that I was over-resourced for these three projects that went over by half an hour. And I remember my blood sugar was so low at the end of this meeting, I was starving. And had I not eaten at that point, I would have crashed. I also had a meeting at one o'clock that I had to get to. So. I, I hope and beg for your forgiveness in my absence. But I would expect that this would be justifiable from the business standpoint. Lord, Lord, you so much. Thanks. 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 Master, are, are we out of time, or may, may I ask a few more people to participate uh, today? Let's do one more. All right. Let's see. Tom is often sitting quietly back there. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> oh, you can't. Oh, my God. the news at night or can you listen to the radio in the car and listen to news topics? Really? Yeah. You know, I, I don't, so what's going on in the world? Any big news lately? The biggest story I can think of right now, I happened to catch because I fell asleep watching TV last night and when I woke up, the news had just started, but I found out later it was a rebroadcast of the news. So here I am waking up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, it's only 10 o'clock, I dozed off, but it was actually like midnight because they were replaying the 10 o'clock news. As it turns out, there was a whole lot of argument and discussion going on in Arden Hills because that's where they plan on putting the Viking Stadium. And they wanted to put it to a vote, or I should say half of the people in the room wanted to put it to a vote so they could vote no, I guess. And the other half said, no, it just needs to go without a voter referendum because we really need to build this thing. We need construction jobs and we need to, it's the only way we're ever going to clean up this former munitions site. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to get it done. So after a very long meeting and a lot of speeches from a lot of the townspeople of Arden Hills and a lot of people, they decided to not put it to the voters for a referendum. And Arden Hills is on its way to becoming the new stadium site for the Vikings. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's going to be raining today.
the only suggestion I would have is maybe um, reduce the action a little bit. A lot of times when you do the action, almost sounds like I'm watching a silent movie. Like you don't even have to see anything due to sort of all of that. So, but when you actually do that and to say it, sometimes you feel like we're done. So I would just, you know, still, still put a lot of action in it, um, but maybe reduce some of the sentences that started with so or and so. Um, Alan for table topics last year there was a, an and so and then I think maybe just one double touch. Arlene just one um, one's on just uh, maybe three or so double touches as table topics and then as evaluator one two ums. And then Matt, so far I've got three ums and two answers. That's all. <laughs> and I evaluated you, and you're always clean, but I did catch one like, oh. <laughs> you know, like in the, like that, like I just did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I was listening really hard because I never catch anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was really going to pick it. I nitpick it. <laughs> so we could keep this going where I could count yours and someone else could tell me <laughs> that we watched also. Oh, he so. asked me to, though. Oh, okay. He gave I thought you were just being humorous. No, he gave me the first <laughs> one. The first one you put your hand up, I thought you were going to like to Alan do the high five. Oh, <laughs> no. Well, you asked me to do it, so I thought you'd want to know. Yeah. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> That covers the evaluation team. He knows a good meeting on the whole. I feel like this room is a little awkward to hold the Toastmasters in because people weren't sure if they should come up to the front or whether they could speak from their desk. And so I, I wasn't sure if I should handshake with everybody. So I think we 
we did pretty well on it in general. Getting used to holding meetings in different rooms is pretty critical because a lot of times you just have to take what you can get in this building. So it's, it's good practice. I think we, we did pretty well. Started on time about a few minutes after 12. And it looks like we'll be early when we finish, which will be good because we can give Chris some more feedback on his speech. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. This time I'd like to ask the meeting minutes person to just evaluate or go through the um, table topics okay. and then we can do a heads down vote. Yeah, I forgot to write everything down because they were just so stimulating. So <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I captured everybody's um, correctly. So Arlene did a service announcement for kids. Um, then I think Wanzan was next, right? With, with uh, Apple products, um, but didn't speak too much to Apple products, but just about Steve Jobs. And was interesting. And then Darren um, gave feedback for Chris. Then Matt um, had to recollect what he did last week. <laughs> and he finally got to it. <laughs> to remember it. it takes a little time. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tom um, gave us the latest news update and weather report. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, and let's have a headstone vote here. And let's see all the hands for Arlene. Okay, hands down. And how about all the hands for Wanza? Okay, hands down. The votes for Darren? Hands down. How about the votes for Matt? Okay, hands down. And all the votes for Tom. Okay, hands down. Let's see. The winner is Darren. <laughs> So you did the same type of things that I think was, were you, was it because somebody was trying to hand you a survey or you're like, yeah. oh, no thanks. So I, I think you'll just want to project that a little bit more, even though I think in person you can 
get it. I'm assuming it's going to be a huge auditorium, right? It's not just going to be a small panel. Yeah. Is that going to be the <laughs> Seven people. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a microphone. It's a. Uh, it's in like a hotel conference room type of setting. So, but you don't know if, if you'll be holding the microphone or it'll be. Yeah, I don't know that. Oh. 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 You'd hope it'd be a clip. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. If you have to hold. Yeah. Oh. But that's also yeah. there's also a danger there. Sometimes if you have it clipped over here and you're talking when you look oh. this way, yeah. your voice oh, yeah. fades out. So yeah, right. right. There are some things to think about. Yeah, great. No. Yeah. They need like a Michael Jackson headset phone that you kind of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll bring my own. Sorry. I would just say your voice and, and confidence just show us. I mean, you're very clear and precise. And yeah, the way you hold yourself. Yeah, you didn't. The articulation. <laughs> yeah, you weren't doing anything. You're, you know, a lot of times I do this yeah. stuff. And, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, you just. You know, none of that. Do you feel comfortable with all those added motions? So this is the first time I've done it in front of an audience with the motions. The last two, I just was wandering around. Okay. But, uh, so yeah, so that's where the video is going to be nice because first of all, I can cut things that don't look good or mm -hmm. didn't, didn't feel good. Uh, for me, so I guess the thing I was thinking of cutting is at the beginning where I, where they, I say more of the survey because I felt like it just takes up time. I don't know if it really adds anything. I, I think I if, okay. if you were doing the thing about where you turn down the person doing the survey, it, maybe uh, you can do it while uh, walking across the stage, like almost like when you just start, like just walking, like you're walking down the street and you say, no thanks, or, or something like yeah, that. Start talking while you're on your way oh, to the center. stage. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. That's yeah. really neat. Unless the microphone's on the stage, then you have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but the thing about the newspaper and then Cosmo and then Playboy, th that's fun. You should, you should get a yeah. 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 And, you know, those are the things you can't rush because it only works because yeah. you're saying it very, you know, yeah. if you rush it, it's not going to be. Yeah, I think I like that one. I, I think that the, the place to gain is... I, I like your suggestion of it. Right, I right away I came because I was like, oh, Peter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, oh, never mind. But the, that's the one thing doing that the karate kid thing. People yeah. always think that's yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 And having a different pose. But like Darren suggested too, having a different personality for yeah. your roommate. Yeah. What's a good personality? Like to, he sounds like, like your roommate sounds like an easy going kind of like a surfer guy or something like, hey, no, no hard feelings, dude, or something. Yeah, I don't know maybe if you put can, a dude in there. If you can pick <laughs> up. <laughs> like, like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, like model it off of one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it fits exactly with the karate pose. Are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, what I suggest is if you have your kind of stereotypical bro and college, hey, dude, hey, bro, we're cool, right? No worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Buy your beer. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys still friends? Well, so, I, so actually, it's made up story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Actually, so the feedback has been huge because so the first time I told it, I didn't even confront my roommate because so it was made up. I wasn't pissed at him. <laughs> and, everyone, and everyone's feedback was like, "What did you say to your roommate? Did you kill him?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, so you just, yeah. So from that feedback, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, right. so you just came up with it on your own. Yeah, so it was a, so in my other life I'm a screenwriter, so it was a screenplay idea that I had. Oh, yeah. And actually my screenplay idea, I thought it should be a drama, because it's like the envy, like why is this person getting there? So that tells you what I know. I thought it was a drama, and one of my writers group said, it's a comedy, it has to be a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know it was funny, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, I did notice you stumbled a little bit when you were talking about describing the conversation with the girl, or she like, no matter how awkward or yeah. some other word to make it yeah I mean and so it was a little bit more segmented there okay. so I can tell you were hesitating yeah I had there perfect, were plenty of words I had perfect wording <laughs> and so once I got screwed up for my perfect word right? <laughs> okay well this is well thank you very much everyone and I brought cookies by the way oh wow <laughs> that's good I appreciate it it's really helped I mean like I said like the being mad at the roommate 
has escalated only because of feedback in the office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great that we have somebody going to this level for our club. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. fun. Well, we'll move on to, I guess we're actually done, and um, I'll close up a little early if you guys are okay with that, and um, we'll just see everybody next week. Best of luck to you, Chris. Thank you. Okay. All right. I didn't need my umbrella. <laughs>